morning, everyone, and a very happy Easter to you. It is wonderful to see you back in church. A number of us has been here over quite a few weeks now on a Sunday, um, leading worship in a more or less empty church, which has been a very interesting experience indeed. And you will notice one or two things that are very slightly different in the way we lead worship today, which are to do with the fact that we're on camera and there are people sharing in the service live at home. Please don't worry, if you're in the congregation, you cannot be seen by any angle that we have set the camera to. It's only people who come beyond the rail who will be in camera shot. So we are going to share in our Easter greeting, our Easter acclamation at the top of the service sheet. Now you'll be pleased to know that government regulations clearly state that responses in worship should not be loud. Aren't you pleased to hear that? So we say this Easter response with <clears throat> quiet but firm sincerity this morning, whereas normally I would encourage you to shout. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Another of the regulations we have to follow, as you're all aware, is that we're not allowed to sing as a congregation. We can, however, have a very limited number of singers to raise the hymn on our behalf. So our very select trio will sing for us, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. We follow the words in our hearts and in our minds, if not with our lips. Turn to our prayers and you'll find the prayer is printed out on your service sheet. When we come to the prayer of confession part of it, the, the second part of the prayer, if you would join in the words, Lord, forgive us. That's in the second part of the prayer. But first we give glory to God. Let's pray. Glory to you, O God. You raised Jesus from the grave, bringing us victory over death and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ, for us and for our salvation you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth and breathe new life into us. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
now and forever. Amen. So we join in the response in this part of the prayer. We think of all those things we want to leave behind this Easter as God gives us new life. So if we have fallen into despair, Lord, forgive us. If we have failed to hope in you, Lord, forgive us. If we have been fearful of death, Lord, forgive us. If we have forgotten the victory of Christ, Lord, forgive us. One of the strengths and delights, I think, of our, our worship more recently through this lockdown is that we've been able each week to have some family ministry prepared for us by Sharon and her team. We'll be seeing it upon the screen, and just a reminder that what you see on the screen here in church is what people are seeing on their screens if they're worshipping at home. Family Fun Ministry with Sharon and the puppet team. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. I'm sure there are some chocolate bunnies here somewhere. Uh, hey, what are you two doing? Hi, Mrs. Lloyd. I'm looking for the chocolate bunnies my mum always buys. And I'm looking for chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. It's Easter time. You're right. Oh, I do love green eggs. They're my favourites. <clears throat> um, I think we should spend some time today thinking about Easter. I already know that Easter is about chocolate and eggs. And bunnies and baby chicks. Hmm. Well, those are fun symbols of Easter, but some... Um... Symbols? I love the symbols. Bang, 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 <laughs> bang, 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 Hey, hey, I want to be in the band too. Bang, 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 yeah, bang. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Huh? Oh, but that was so fun. I didn't mean symbols like the instruments in a band but symbols like a small picture that represents a bigger thing or reminds us of something. What do you mean? Well, tell me, how are baby chicks and baby bunnies alive? Um, they're animals. Well, yes, that is true. But how else are the baby chicks and baby bunnies alive? Um, they're babies? Yes. They both were just born. They are symbols of new life. Easter is about new life. Cool. Well, what about eggs? What do they mean? Ah, well, that is important. A mum bird sits on her neck, warming and caring for her eggs, waiting. Waiting for something special to happen. She's waiting for her baby chicks to come out of their eggs. Yes, but can she see the chick inside the egg? No, the egg has a shell in it. You can't see through it. Can she feel the chick in the egg? Uh, no, the shell is hard and smooth. Oh, but the mum still cares for the egg and wait. Why? Um... Oh, she just knows it will come out. Yes. She she can't see and can't feel. That's a symbol of hope and faith. Hope and faith is believing in something you can't see or feel. And Easter is about hope and faith? That's right. Okay, okay, okay. I get the bit about the baby chicks and the baby bunnies and even the eggs, but chocolate? Ah, yes. Chocolate. Uh, I have chocolate for you, but, um, I can't get through the screen, but I'll post it to you. Um, how does this chocolate remind me of Easter? Tell me, Bert, did you have to work for the chocolate I'm going to give you? No, you just gave it to me. Did you have to buy it? Um, no, you're just giving it to us. That's like Easter trick. 
something given freely. Oh? Yeah, I bought that chocolate. I paid for it because I'm giving it to you freely. So Easter is about something given? Yes, but it's also about receiving something. Huh? Well, I gave you the chocolate, but you received it from me. You're thankful. And Easter is about getting something and being thankful? Yes. Well, that brings us to the last and most important symbol. I have it just here. It's a cross. That's right. What does it remind us of? I'm glad you asked, Elvis. The cross reminds me of just how much Jesus loves me. And each of those symbols are pieces of a puzzle. God loved us so much that he made a way for us to be with him forever. Do you know how he did that? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not die but have eternal life. That's right. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to pay all punishment for us. And Jesus chose to do it. It's a gift from God. When we believe and have faith in God, we have a new spirit and a new life in him. So the bunnies and chicks remind us of new life in Jesus. And the eggs remind us of hope and faith in God. And the chocolate reminds us of God's gifts to all people. And getting that gift and giving thanks to God. And the cross reminds us that Jesus gave us that when we died for our sins. Wow. Easter is really important. Yeah, it's my favourite time of the year. Gosh, normally I'd be looking forward to a chocolate mountain when we got home from Easter service. This year I've got one small chocolate bunny. I'm on rather a strict diet at the moment. However, we did have bacon this morning and there wasn't any meat during Lent. So the fast is over and the feast has begun, even if it's a feast with a diet. And I eat my chocolate bunny, I shall remember about new life and also that chocolate is a wonderful gift to humanity. We have another hymn uh, sung for us. Um, this is one that perhaps we don't know quite so well as some of the other Easter hymns, so it's good that our singers are leading this morning. But it is a song that takes us into the Bible story that we're going to read. It's very much based on the story in John's Gospel that we're going to hear immediately after the hymn. See what a morning gloriously bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Oh, 
Hearing the gospel story of Easter is always at the heart of Easter morning service. This year we hear it from John's gospel. Helen's going to read for us. And because this is a very special gospel reading at the heart of everything it means to be a follower of Jesus, we're going to welcome the reading with, with words of response. So if you could join in at the beginning and the end of the reading with the response in which Helen will lead us. So we hear from John's Gospel about that glorious Easter morn. Alleluia! Hear the Gospel of Christ. Glory, Glory to Christ our Saviour. Alleluia! I'm reading from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Alleluia. This is the gospel of Christ.
familiar at all with the musical Les Mis, Les Miserables. You know that one of its finest me uh, melodies and most poignant moments is when the character Marius sings the song Empty Chairs and Empty Tables. A group of idealistic young men have been meeting in a cafe bar and they all plan and take part in a revolution in Paris in the middle of the 19th century. They take to the barricades. The revolution fails catastrophically. Only a handful of people join them and many of the young idealists are killed. Marius goes back to their cafe and he sees the familiar seats and tables, but not the people seated there who were there before the revolution. We have one or two empty chairs and tables downstairs in the church this morning. If you're at home, you can't see that. One or two, but not very many. Yet we're also aware, because we are spaced out and socially distanced, that there are quite a number of our family and our community who are not here today. There are more empty chairs than it appears looking round. And for many of us, when we go home today and we have our lunch or our dinner, there will be empty chairs at our table because there are people who cannot be there. People whom we might have invited or to whose home we might have gone as part of our family or our friendship or our neighbours, which to eat our celebration Easter meal, the chairs, the tables are empty. There are so many spaces that have been empty in our lives in this last year. There are, of course, most tragically, those who have lost friends and family through the pandemic, and they have the most poignant empty chairs and tables of all. There are those who have lost friends and family in the normal course of things, nothing to do with the pandemic but have been unable to have proper funerals and memorials and times of thanksgiving and to mourn together and there is an emptiness from that there is the emptiness of not being able to meet and to see people there is the emptiness of the things in our lives which we enjoy so much which fill our lives and enrich them that we haven't been able to do. I'm rejoicing because I've been able to go back to my archery club as outdoor sports are now back on. The tennis club is meeting again and I know many who love that are enjoying being back and able to have outdoor sport. It's been an empty thing in my life not to be able to take part in my sport with my friends and if you are a player of any sport or any game or any hobby or any activity or any community group you will feel the same. It has been an empty space in your life and of course finally our church has been empty more or less and many churches are still empty this Easter others are only able to be partially open as we are empty spaces empty chairs empty tables and it is that detail because sometimes it is the little details in the Bible story that speak out to you it is that little detail where John says the place was empty where Jesus laid. There was an angel at either end, sign of God's presence, but the space was empty. An empty chair, an empty table. Jesus was not there. Now, I, I, th that took hold of me in this last week or so, and I started to think about places in the Bible where there are empty spaces. And do you know the Bible is absolutely full of empty spaces, especially when it's talking about God? Strange paradox, isn't it? Full of empty spaces. Of course, you don't notice them because you don't notice an empty space, do you? <laughs> There's nothing there, but they are there. In the time of Jesus, 2,000 years ago, the place to go and meet with God was the great temple in Jerusalem. That was where people felt at their very nearest to God where they thought he touched the earth this magnificent temple and it was huge so we would imagine you know a great cathedral soaring arches and pillars and spires and towers nothing like that it was a series of empty open air courtyards 95 percent of the great temple is empty space there's nothing in it it's just an enclosed area where people go 
to pray. So unlike other places of worship at that time, which were full of clutter, full of multiple altars and multiple images and multiple idols and all sorts of nooks and crannies in which there were symbols that you could go and meet the gods through. But the great temple where the one true God is worshipped is empty, apart from people, of course. And at its very centre, there is one building that has a roof on it, a recognisable building, only quite a small one, no windows and only one door, the big curtain over it. And the high priest goes in there once a year to offer incense because that is the actual place where God is felt to be present, most present on the whole of the earth. And when the high priest goes in there, behind the veil of the curtain, it's completely empty. There is nothing in that holy of holies, that inner sanctuary. And before there was a temple, when God's people had not yet built cities, but were, were still semi-nomadic, moved around the place a lot, the focus for their worship wasn't a building, it was a rather strange object called the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, now, forget all that stuff about Indiana Jones and the Lost Ark. There's all sorts of story and myth and fantasy stuff built around this. This was nothing more than a wooden box, uh, plated in gold, gold leaf on it, which could be slung between some poles and carried around from place to place. And inside it were some stones on which were carved the Ten Commandments. And it was a focus for people's worship that you could move around rather than the church which stays put. But it wasn't the stones inside it that made it holy. No such thing. On the top of this box were carved two cherubim, two winged angels. One at either end. Does that ring any bells with our morning story? One at either end facing each other and in between them was empty space. And that empty space above the box was the holy bit. Not the box, not what was in it, not the image of the angels, the empty bit in between. They called it the mercy seat, the place where God sits to deliver his mercy to you. But it was the empty bit that mattered, the space that was created. And before they had that, there was Moses in the desert, in the desert, an empty space, nothing there barely enough to keep the sheep alive. Empty place. And God speaks to him out of thin air. He sees this scraggy bit of bush that seems to have flames coming out of it, just, just faint lights flickering. Just thin air, nothing there. And a voice speaks to him and he says, who's talking to me? And the voice then says, I am speaking to you. He gets an empty name out of empty space. And to this day, a strictly orthodox Jew, never mind not naming God, won't even say the word God. Instead, they will say Hashem, which just means the name. God is just referred to as the name. And the name is anonymous, empty. Empty spaces are everywhere that God seems to appear in the Bible. What a strange thing to say. Come back to Easter morning. And John's first witness to the resurrection, what do they see? Mary goes into the tomb, the first one to really go inside and look and see what's going on. And she sees an empty space, and at either end of it, an angel in white. So I thought I'd do the visual aid thing this morning. I haven't got two angels, just one. Uh, an empty space. Just like that Ark of the Covenant with its two angels and an empty space in between. We don't know whether there's a connection between those two things, but one scholar has suggested that there might be. I think it's quite a powerful image. And it is only when she has been there in that emptiness and she turns away that she actually meets Jesus, but she doesn't even recognize him at that point. It's out of the empty space that she encounters Jesus. It's not glorious light it's not blazing sunshine, it's a glimmering dark sort of a place. It's still early morning, there's hardly any lights in the tomb. It's half seen. This greatest moment of God showing himself to earth, of God revealing who he really is, in resurrection, in new life and in new hope, in bringing Jesus back from the dead, and what Mary sees is nothing. It's empty. And that is the moment from which she begins to experience the resurrection. So friends, if we have been living in some very empty spaces, and if this Easter morning 
there are empty spaces in our worship, not just the seats, but the fact that we can't stay and talk together, the fact that we can't have a cup of coffee together, the fact that we can't sing. That's a big empty space for us in church, our inability to join together in hymns. And if when you go home, there are empty chairs this dinner time in your home, if you're one who lives alone, and have had to spend so much of this lockdown almost entirely on your own, another big empty space. Stay with that first image of Easter morning that it's out of the empty space that Mary becomes the first one to meet the risen Jesus. Emptiness throughout the Bible is a place where God can meet us in deserts, in open courtyards, in the space above a wooden box rather than within it, in a grave from which the body has gone, in the half-light of a morning in the garden and the gardener who isn't at first recognized, in empty places. I think that's an amazingly powerful sign of hope for us this Easter when we have so much emptiness around us. So I hope you can take that away with you. And I hope if you find an emptiness today, that it becomes a space out of which you meet the risen Jesus. And the empty shall become full, and the darkness shall become light, and the death and passing shall become life and joy, because this is the gift of Easter to us all. Amen. I was about to say we're going to sing together, and I can't say that, can I? <laughs> because we're not literally, but we are going to share in the song, All Heaven Declares the Glory of the Risen Lord. prayers. As you know, Hannah is with us on a, a placement as part of training for ministry. Um, uh, it's quite a long-term placement, a couple of years or so, isn't it, Hannah? For the next few weeks from Easter through to the summer, she does a slightly different placement with another church, so we, we won't be seeing Hannah and family for a few weeks till the summer, but you are coming back, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> She's coming back. So another empty space, but there will be a return. Hannah, thank you for leading our prayers. We come to a time of offering our prayers for all in need. To the words, Lord of life, please respond with, hear our prayer. In the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, in your love, the church throughout the world those recently baptized and confirmed, those who minister to others. 
we rejoice with the whole church in the joy of the risen Lord. May we who know the good news go and tell others that he is risen. Grant that your church may help to bring peace and hope to a troubled world. We praise and thank you for the churches that have been able to open for worship and for, create, and for the creative ways which have been found to unite people in prayer and worship. We pray for those who are isolated or are shielding and long to gather with others and those who cannot access online worship. We pray for Stan and the ministry here at Surbiton Hill, especially in these challenging times. We ask that you would strengthen and empower all of us as we strive to be witnesses of the risen Christ from where we are and as we are. May your whole church know the power and be a sign that Christ is risen. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Remember in your love the world you have made. Those who seek a fair and proper use of the world's resource. Those who strive for justice and peace among the nations. We praise and thank you for the progress that has been made in the COVID vaccination program. We pray for an equal sharing of this vaccine that poorer countries may be able to access it to. We pray for those in our health services who have been put under additional pressure as a result of this pandemic for those preparing for a third wave and those working in care homes. In a global world of wealth and poverty, greed and generosity, may all the leaders of this world be helped and supported, guided and strengthened to not just think of their own needs, but the many needs of the wider world. May the whole earth be transformed by mercy and rejoice in hope. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Remember in your love those who suffer, the victims of violence and injustice, those who mourn. For countries torn apart by war and violence, insurrection, exploitation, natural disaster and deliberate destruction. For all their people caught up in events and conclusions way beyond their control. We think especially at this time of Myanmar and Mozambique and all their peoples. We bring before you the many lives lost during this pandemic for all those who are grieving the loss of family or friends, whether through COVID or not. The pain of loss compounded by the pain of restrictions and isolation. Draw near to all who weep and mourn at this time, all who are completely alone on this Easter day and those feeling deserted and unable to carry on. We pray for all who are ill and those who are caring for them. And we think of those who have a heavy weight on their hearts and minds and tears in their eyes. We ask that you would meet all in their empty space. May all in need of comfort, 
strength and freedom in the living Christ. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Remember in your love those who have died, those who have confessed the faith, and those whose faith is known to you alone. We rejoice with the disciples of all your saints in the joy of the risen Lord. We ask you to bless all our loved ones departed with the fullness of your light and peace in eternal life. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask that these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen. We now say together the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we now come to our final hymn, Thine be the glory.
in a moment our closing prayer and then we'll say the grace together but friends you've been ever so good in not talking which is very hard for us isn't it and sadly we're not allowed to gather as we leave the church I can't come and greet you with the front I'll be popping out the back to get on the computer to go on the online coffee morning to talk to the people who've been worshipping online but what we can do is have a little socially distant happy Easter wave to one another before we go now I'm going to wave to the camera so the folk at home can see that we're waving they can't see you but if you like just turn to those around you and give a little wave and say happy Easter as normally Happy Easter, happy Easter to everybody watching online. Everybody's waving in the church. We know you can't see us on camera. They're all waving for you too. Fantastic. Isn't it weird the way we have to do things? Uh, a prayer and then we'll say the grace together. Let's pray. Lord our God, we give you thanks because you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his resurrection we are brought to new life, so by his continued reign in us we may be brought to eternal joy through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I invite you to remain seated while the organ's playing because the live broadcast is still continuing at that point and then when Linda stops playing we'll, we'll let you know and the stewards will give you a little guidance on the ways that we need to leave the church that are safe and, and distant from one another. Thank you Linda. Mm -hmm.